announcement. Hey, stewards, we got some big news for our Patreon. We are now going to be doing exclusive Q&As that are only coming from our Patreon subscribers. So if you've had a burning question for us to answer live on the pod, get onto our Patreon. You can drop your question right in the messaging board and select questions will be answered directly on air from the podcast. So make sure you get onto our Patreon, subscribe, right. drop those questions in there, and we will answer them on the pod. Yes. We love you, stewards. Let's get into it. Welcome to Good Service. We are your hosts, Ben Chung. And Kevin Zuck. Each week, we'll be bringing you real, raw, and vulnerable talks about life, faith, and everything in between, and always over a fire meal. Pull up a chair. Let's eat. Folks, welcome or welcome back to another episode of Good Service. We are your hosts, Ben. And Kevin. And today, we got the homie in the pie. We got... Grammy and Dove award-winning producer, Ooh. composer, and writer. You may have heard his original compositions for the NFL, the NBA, hey. the WNBA. <laughs> He's worked with artists such as Lecrae, Andy Mineo, Tadashi, and Trip Lee, just to name a few. He's a husband, a new father, mm. and also new pastor. We have hey. Alex Hitchens hey. in the pod. Hey. Hey. It is a privilege. Yeah. Privilege to be here with y'all. Yes, Alex. Ooh, great thank company. you so much for pulling through, man. Yes, yes, um, yes. So before we get into the conversations, we hop right into the meal. So, Kevin, what are we about to have today? Yes, we are having the famous island food, Faka Grill. Let's go. Let's uh, go. This is by a great friend of mine, David. Shout out, David. We love you. Uh, thank you for so, uh, thank you so much for the food here today. And today we got the, uh, I think it's like a big combo pack they have. It's called like the Faka Combo. It's it like is, everything. It is packed. Uh, it literally has the chicken katsu. We have the pork belly and their version of the garlic shrimp and, and it's crispy and they have uh, crispy spam masubis here Ooh. with that delicious island mac and we got a ube flan ube flan i've never mm -hmm. had a ube flan mm -hmm. all right very interesting all that so let's get our first bite ready yeah, yeah. i'm super Fata excited to uh, jump in they actually have um if you guys ever have a good cheat meal ready they do this crazy uh, grilled cheese where they put pork belly pieces oh in there God. and it's like <laughs> i did not get yeah. that today because i would put us to sleep yes. but yeah, yeah, that's yeah, literally yeah, one yeah. of my favorite like melts or like grilled cheeses okay. that i've ever had is yeah. at this at this i point. might have yeah. to swing by yeah. and pick it yeah. up yeah, on my yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay faka grill yeah two locations gardena and i believe still in anaheim okay or Word. orange yeah orange yeah that's what's up yep. okay yep. yep shout out faka grill all right so today um so we always start with a, a first bite reflection question. And um, I was I was praying for you this morning and I was kind of doing some kind of, yeah, you know, I was kind of like, yo, what, what are what are our guests up to? What are they doing out in the world? And um, so, yeah, man, like there's a lot of new things, I feel like, in your life. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you're a new father. You are a new pastor. Um, I was super stoked to just, uh, be there at, at, at church to, you know, see you kind of get, right um, uh, I don't know if it's, is it ordination? Ordained, yeah, ordained. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. The proper yeah. Phrase. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I'm like, oh, cool. And then, and then I remember you introduced yourself as pastor Alex one time. I said, let's go, my guy. <laughs> right, pastor, let's go. It's still, it's still, it's still <laughs> feel weird, but you know. <laughs> yeah. So, um. So and so I was thinking, you know, I was like, okay, yeah, like there's a lot of new stuff going, and I was asking the Holy Spirit, um, yeah, I was like, God, what do you, what do you, what do you want us to kick off on? And uh, so I feel like He was giving me um, kind of a two-parter question. And so um, part one is, what is burdening your heart these days? What is burdening your heart, and what does it look like for you to be a leader right now? So what yeah. is burdening your heart these days? That's a big bite question. Yeah, right? that's a, you might need to take he two always bites. always tries to give his heartburn yeah. on these <laughs> questions, by the way. Every time, it's like, oh, I just want to enjoy yeah. this. Nah, man, we got to jump yeah. into the deep end. Yeah, this yeah. is a two-parter. So, yeah. yeah, so what is burdening your heart these mm. days? And what does it look like for you to be a leader right now? Yeah, no, that's a great so question. So we're going to get into the bite. That's I'm going to get bite. into Let's the pork the bite belly. And do some feedback real quick. Oh, my gosh. Mm-hmm. Something about Hawaiian flavors is it just hits you with like 
Mm-hmm. The familiar, but then there's also like the new, the new <laughs> uniqueness to it. Mm-hmm. The pork belly got a little bit of sweet, but got a little bit of that. Soy I love that their it. pork, but the way they like to do it, I think they braise it because it is so soft. Oh, mm. so oh yeah. Yeah, that's fire. Definitely. Definitely yeah. feel that. Shout out that's to Faka Grill. Yeah. Indeed. Love the team over there. Yeah, great question, though. Uh, what is burdening my heart right now? Mm-hmm. I feel like this has been a theme really since the top of the year before I got ordained. Mm. Um, I think really coming, even, come, even before the top of the year, coming out of the pandemic mm-hmm. is sobriety, like emotional, Ooh. mental sobriety. Okay. okay. I think. We all collectively went through just a crazy flip turn upside down experience. Our worlds like, so, I mean, I got married when everything shut down, like the mm-hmm. week of shutdown is when I got married, wow. man. Um, empty church, Pastor Jay got us, you know, he's like, he was, I remember calling him. I was on my bachelor party and I'm on the bat- on a patio in Mexico. I'm like, I think America's shutting down. Do I still get married? He's like, I, you should get married. I'll marry you in a backyard or on a mountain. Just get married. Mm-hmm. She's like, all right, we'll do it at the Hope Center. That's Empty, so cool. just like six people, him, two witnesses, a photographer. Wow. wow. Um, but I just remember just how we all just pivoted so quickly. It's almost yeah. like a whiplash. Mm-hmm. And I feel like as of today, you know, 2024, we're still kind of recovering from that. Oh, absolutely. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't even know if we've all fully processed what happened. Because you go into survivor mode, right? For sure. And when you go into survivor mode, I think sometimes you develop coping mm. habits. Yeah. Um, and coping habits threaten like sobriety, right? Yes. And I think I have a heart for us to move towards more emotional, mental, and spiritual sobriety. Yeah. Where we're not just surviving. Um, but we have like a clear heart, clear eyes, clear mind for like mm. what the Lord is calling us to do, for what our circumstances are. Um, I think the enemy wants to hijack our, our mind and, and even just a lens at which we look through life. And so, so good, man. Yeah. So I really, I really want us to be sober people. Um, cause I think that's, that's such an important part of being able to love God and love people. Well, right. Yeah. If we're just mm-hmm. coping and trying to, you know, s- sustain ourselves because of something that we haven't processed or understood, then, you know, we don't, we're going to feel like we don't have enough bandwidth or capacity to love others well mm. you know um and it just it, i think it just perpetuates more individualism um that is just really prevalent and and life promotes individualism right it promotes mm. like take care of yourself be this achieve this you don't even have to go to the store like buy this and get it tomorrow <laughs> it's like it's all about me 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 right, me right. you know mm. um and i think it's because we're just trying to just survive just tread water you know yeah so yeah. that's yeah. yeah, I got to speak into that, please, um, man. See, so man, here, here's the Lord and him showing up in the way that he wants to, because um, as I'm, you know, praying for you, I was praying. I was like, Lord, like, how do how do we um, how do we bless Alex today? Like, what do what do uh, what do you have for him? And right now you just hit me with something mm-hmm. <laughs> that yeah. Like God's like, I got something for you today. Mm. And, um, you know, we, we keep it raw on this show, man. We don't sugarcoat. We don't act as if um, if things are not fully OK. Yeah. We're like, hey, things are not OK right now. Um, this is not the show where we come all polished and we have this like prepared conversation. And it's like we're going to do this topic and yeah. we really flow. And, uh, you know, this almost like kind of serves as like a like a an audio journal for Kevin and myself. <laughs> like we got to just like, right. Welcome we to... can go back in like episode 10. Like, dude, I was going through that yeah, at that time. Yeah, yeah. And then by episode like 20, it's like, Hey, I, I you know, I, you can see the progression from mm. even what you were talking yep. about then to mm-hmm. now you're yep. here. And so speaking of, you know, being sober minded mm-hmm. and you were talking about coping and, uh, trying to get out of survival mode, you know, because survival mode, oftentimes you start to do things that you would not do if you were in a kind of a healthier place or a healthier yeah. place in life where it's like, yo, things are kind of good. So I don't need to go into survival mm-hmm. mode. Survival mode is like, yo, I have to do this mm-hmm. because I need to self-preserve. 
or um yeah oftentimes we go into like this um without us even realizing coping because we want to numb something whether, whether that's like i don't want to think about that mm -hmm. i mm -hmm. want to escape and um you know for this momentary uh you know time i want to just forget about whatever it is and we don't the thing about coping is not like we consciously cope. No. It's yeah. like, I need to go cope right yeah, now. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's like we cope without knowing. For sure. Mm -hmm. And so, um, man, even just right before we started rolling, I just shared with you guys like this, you know, I went to go get a physical mm -hmm. and, you know, doctor telling me like, you, you might have high blood pressure. You might want to like regulate that. Mm -hmm. And then I start like, you know, and now like this morning I took my blood pressure and then I'm like, it's still high. And so, man, like this is like also... I just have to admit, man, this is a level of pride for me because, you know, I've, I, I live a fairly healthy lifestyle and I've, you know, done pretty well, you know, now that I'm 43 years old, I'm like, oh, I don't feel 43, you mm -hmm. know, like yeah. I'm just like, da, 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 da. Like, good, brother. You know, you look good. <laughs> but thank you. Thank you. But like, you know, but even still, there's like this level of like pride and like, yeah, I'm good. I don't, I don't need to do what everyone else does. Mm -hmm. I'm good because I take care of myself like this and mm -hmm. I feel like this. Mm -hmm. And then like you, you go and get a physical done and then, yeah. you know, they say high blood pressure is like a silent killer because it oftentimes doesn't have symptoms, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. And, um, and I, when I look at, you know, I was like looking up some stuff online. Okay. So how do you regulate high blood pressure, blah, blah, blah. And then it talks about lifestyle, you know, exercise, diet, you know, caffeine consumption, alcohol consumption and all that. And I've, I've even shared, you know, I probably even shared it on this podcast. I, sh I think I even shared it with you when we had lunch that one time. I was like, man, you know, with alcohol, yeah. like I got to really check this relationship. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I don't, I cannot um, act as if, nah, but I got it under control. Yeah. Like, because that's the enemy's subtle way of like, yeah, 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 yeah. You mm -hmm. got it under control, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. like, um, and so... And then when you said, you literally said sober minded. So mm. like you hit straight sobriety. to the word yeah. sobriety, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, um, yeah, I'm really, I really feel that the Holy Spirit's been like really trying to talk to me. Mm. He's like, how much are you going to ignore this? Yeah. You know, when the signs are clear and now you even have physically something that's show indicating like, hey, it's showing up even yeah. in your health, you yeah. know? Yeah. And, and. You know, we talked about a health journey, you know, Kevin's yep. been on a health journey right now, mm -hmm. too. And so, yeah, man, I think that that word that you just spoke was like the Lord saying, I got a word for you, Ben. <laughs> yeah. You know, no, that's real. So, that's real. Yeah. I think and I think we ha the willingness to have people speak into it mm -hmm. is super important. Right. Mm -hmm. So you had the doctor speak into your circumstance. Yeah. Right. I think it's really easy. It's, again, going back to the pandemic to isolate, right? So now we're not seen or known, but we're suffering, we're coping. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are we making ourselves available or vulnerable enough to allow people to like yeah. check us and see, hey, like yeah. you're not doing well? Because then that, you know, it's gonna rub against our pride, sure. like you said, mm -hmm. but I always say, man, if I got, you know, if I got cancer, you know, sure, I can be protecting my peace by you not telling me, yeah. but I'm dying. Right. Mm. I'd rather deal with that moment of you telling me that I'm dying and I'm sick yeah. and then be able to work from that rather than live in this illusion or right. this lie Ignorance. that I'm OK. Yeah, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's going to it's going to be painful. Right. I mean, right. it's you know, it's part of living life, you know, yeah. but are we willing to be vulnerable enough to allow that truth to hit us and then grow from that truth and be able to restore, you know, pursue the journey of restoration and the health, emotional mm -hmm. health, physical health. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's hard, you know, and I think, again, if we're if we're coping, we're just I want to protect my peace. Right. Like, I'm just trying to shred water. I'm at, I'm at capacity. Any news, any bad news, I can't handle that. But, right. yeah. you know, that's the enemy is like, hey, just just you're good. Stay stay where you are. Wow. You're dying. That's you don't such know. Because, yeah, when you say we're, we're coping because we're trying to protect our peace and it's a form of like self-preservation. Yeah. yeah. But then, like, there's a healthy way to protect your peace. Yeah. And there is the way the other way by yeah. buying into the lie of yeah. like, if you do this, that's going to protect your peace. Yeah, Cause exactly. you could just shut off to things. Yeah. Yeah. You, I think, just, yeah. Cause I think there's, we, I think our desire for peace is God given. Like mm, he made us right. to, op, to exist in Shalom. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. right. I think the problem is, and this goes back to the garden. We want right. to be the determiners of what that looks like or how we right. get that. Right? right. So it's like, Hey, just, just abide with me, be in the garden and just chill with me. 
Right. We're like, ah, let me figure out if I know a better way mm. to protect my peace. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Or the enemy was like, does God really like, look, look at your circumstance. Like, look at, look at that thing you're missing out on. Yeah. Do you think God really is interested in your peace? Yeah. And he's like, ah, oh, let me, let me actually go after and try to figure out what that peace is. Mm. But we, we operate, then we end up outside of God's protection out of yeah. outside of his will yeah. and we're trying to do it on our own and that just creates that's exactly what the enemy wants us right because yeah. then now we're tripping and we're stumbling and we're injuring people around us because we're just trying to like use people to use things and so yeah but yeah, yeah that, that desire for peace is that's and i always say i think as a songwriter i'm like i hear these themes when i'm writing with believers and unbelievers that are shared themes like i want to love i want you to love me forever like yeah. yeah there's a desire for that permanence that faithfulness yeah the problem is we're looking for those solutions outside of where the Lord has right. wired us to find it, That's you know? Right. And so, right. so I do want to honor that, like your desire for peace, your desire mm. to be sober. Like those are good things. We're just going about it the wrong way. Right. Yeah. You know, I love that the topic of burden just brings up like this, this feeling of discomfort, this feeling of, mm-hmm. and I, that's like super on theme with just everything that we're talking about. Because as I was thinking over the question, the, the that, been proposed like when you always you always pick a question bro that i'm always like oh why do we have to talk about this right now i don't pick the question yeah, I bro I know, I know i know holy spirit come you know and it's funny because i've been in a season of massive change as well mm-hmm. um you know hearing all of that definitely here celebrating with all the wins brother that's amazing that all those great things have been happening but with great things it's great change too mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. and so i've been in a season of really positive things but it's just so much change. And right I should, yeah. <laughs> and, and what's crazy is some of these changes are things I've been praying for. Mm. And I, mm. and I shared this on another podcast mm. where literally now these answer prayers are coming in, flooding in. I'm like, Oh my gosh, like, what am I supposed to? And now I'm like, was I even ready for all mm. of this? Mm-hmm. And I think the, the feeling that I'm feeling without trying to cope where God is really um, needing out my sanctification in this season is I'm trying not to cope. Mm -hmm. I'm trying not to turn to food or to my other vices of any kind of numbing out on social, whatever, Mm -hmm. whatever these different coping mechanisms still uh, are kind of around like these little demons or whatever Mm -hmm. it feels like, you Mm -hmm. know, instead of doing all of those things to sit and face it with God has been such an experience, mm, mm. not a willing experience yeah. at first, I'll tell you that. <laughs> and it's been so interesting because I'm learning that God is not trying to chase after my my personal comfort. He'd rather have my sanctification. Mm. And so some of that is really, really painful. Yeah, yeah. And I have to sit there and just, and just take it like kind of all in and take a moment and... It's been, I, I'll be honest, I, I'm usually good with change, but mm. I've never had so much all at once. Mm. And there's things that he gave, but there's also assignments that he finished. Mm. And it's the finished assignments that I'm like, but I'm not done with it yet. You know what I mean? Come on, Lord, let me yeah. just let me just stay there for just mm. a little longer. Mm-hmm. Let me mm-hmm. let me be the guy for that. Like I want to be that guy still, and I have to even go. Well, he said it's done. So I have to, I have to obey. And then there's this tidal wave of like movement where I know that like things are just being cranked up right now. And so I have to just jump in and be in this river of obedience. Like I just got to do it right now. And it's, um, it's a lot, man. That question is definitely a lot. I've been sitting with a lot of those burdens to be honest in Mm -hmm. trying not to cope. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's, I hear the need to be with God being the ultimate priority. Right. Mm -hmm. I think it's easy to make the thing, the achievement, even the peace, like all of those things, it's easy to Uh, elevate those things as the ultimate thing. mm. But if we have those things apart from being with God or where God wants us to be, I think we're selling ourselves short, yeah. but that's so hard because it's like, what if God calls me into this space that's really uncomfortable? <laughs> well, if it's uncomfortable, but I'm with him, is that right. more valuable than being in this comfort place? And I think I'm guilty of it. Like there's a chapter in my faith walk that was about comfort. Like God is a means to my comfort. 
you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. rather than God being the ultimate mean, the, right. the, the end. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think a lot of American Christianity is built on like, hey, like, and that goes back to the inv- individualism, right? So yeah. it's like mm-hmm. American Christianity is about your peace or your, mm-hmm. you know, and, and it, peace is, again, peace is a good thing. But it's not the ultimate thing, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Um, or like, like, not. I would, you know, I would, let me walk that back. Peace with God is obviously like the prime, but like our earthly comfort, maybe comfort's a better word than peace. Yeah, I get you. Yeah, comfort you being, yeah. it can be a good thing, you know. Yeah. Um, it yeah. can be a byproduct, right? But it can't be the ultimate can't product, the you know. Yeah, and you so, know, <clears throat> I not not to be all like sound all ultra Christian here, but, but Let's do it. you know, <laughs> Jesus says he is peace. Like yeah, he yeah, is peace. Um, he is the comforter, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Um, right. but right. Jesus being peace and being the comforter does not mean you will live comfortably and all your circumstances mm-hmm. will be peaceful. Mm-hmm. And, um, and what I'm learning I guess I'll go into, you know, what has been burdening me, which is actually funny because I I thought when when I when I got that question, like, you know, what's burdening you right now? I thought that meant like what is like sort of stirring you up to like become passionate for. I thought that's what it meant. But there's also like what's an actual burden? (laughs) Like what's actually weighty? Weighty. What's what's making you struggle? And I'm like, wow, that's an actual like kind of more of the term burden that. Um, even by the definition, even the world would be like burden is not like a what's stirring your heart. It's more like what's a burden? What's like a drag for you right yeah, now? You know, yeah. so when I when I think about it like that, um, you know, I would say the thing that's weighty and it's tough is like, yeah, like my family circumstances, which I've shared about a couple of times here. But um, like last night, for instance, I had dinner with um, with my brother and my sister with the intention of like, yo, we need to come up with the game plan to figure out how are we going to like figure all this stuff out, you mm-hmm. know, with our mom and these mm-hmm. different things. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I was not looking forward to this dinner. Cause I'm like, you don't like, you don't really look forward to things like, yo, there's this problem. So yeah. let's meet up for dinner to talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I'm just like, yep. Oh man, I'm not even looking forward to this. And it's like, because my brother feels a certain type of way. My sister feels a certain type of way. And I'm feeling like, man, I got to figure out how to like bring it all together. Like, and I feel that the challenge that God has kind of shown me and, and I don't feel that it's this like, um, no God, that's too much. I don't want to do it. But like, I feel like God's like, you have to be the peacemaker in this. Mm. Like that's your role. Like, Mm. um, and I guess that's kind of even going to the second part of the question of like being a leader. Like, how are you being a leader right now? So, you know, I think the burden for me is like this weight of like family, um, just struggle issues, finances, and like, how are you going to get yourselves out of this hole? And it seems like it's an unending hole. Mm. And, and it's like, oh man, I don't want to think about this right now, but we have to. Yeah. And then, you know, God's call to me, like, Ben, you have to be the peacemaker in this, AKA that's how you lead. Yeah. You lead by being a peacemaker and that doesn't mean that it's going to be easy. But I also feel like there's this invitation to trust in Jesus to allow that peacemaking to happen. Mm. I'm not coming in there with this like, oh, psh, I got this, dude. Watch how I diffuse everything. Mm-hmm. I actually would be the worst person in this case because mm-hmm. like I'm the one that's like, I'm the one that's oh, like no. the, the hothead of I, I get my dad's temper. You know what I'm saying? Like if anybody is going to come in with their natural tools mm-hmm. like i'm the worst one yeah. you know so but i'm like god i literally can't do this unless yeah. your holy spirit gives me the words yeah. gives me the ability in this in the moment to like assess like yo calm down bring jesus into the conversation don't point fingers and like who's doing what who's not who did more of what yeah. it's like yo it's not about that it's come together as a team mm-hmm. and be a team like it's not you guys versus mom it's like, how do we get mom and all of us on the same team, you know? And then the miracles, God's got to do that. And mm-hmm. literally, I was telling them last time, I'm like, guys, anything short of a miracle, this is not going to work. Mm-hmm. So, like, we got to rely on the Lord, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and we have to, like, really help each other and be patient and be humble. So, yeah, I think, like, that is the burden for me. And then 
the call to be a leader is to like be a peacemaker you know scripture says that blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called sons of god mm. and like you know that's that was something that the lord gave me at the top of this year he's like your identity is you're not who you, you're not what you do you are who i say you are and you are my right. son you are a son of god and yeah, so that that's right and so like i'm like wow lord like you said the peacemakers are the sons of god and like you gave me that word this year too so like mm -hmm. that's the like is how clearer can it get like that's the invitation like be a peacemaker that's how you lead and then you, i think it even goes deeper because i think true leadership you know in the home like a husband or a father like you got to be a peacemaker in your home you know so I, even that i feel like god's like preparing me he's like i know you're not married yet you think you're just gonna have the tools to be a good husband and father once you get married like mm -hmm. no you gotta get trained in that junk now mm -hmm. you know and so yeah. i'm like okay lord like speaking of like um the, the sanctification piece that you were saying though too sanctification is like walking through the fire yeah yep. you know it's yep. like you're being purified like you know talking about like the you yep. know purifying gold you gotta yep. like let that impurities rise and they only rise when there's yeah. heat like mm -hmm. extreme yeah. heat makes the stuff mm -hmm. rise and they mm -hmm. scrape it off and then and then when it's, once it's like clear and you you know you can see your own face yeah like and that's like the whole analogy of like you know like the refiner's fire jesus is like scooping out all yeah. this stuff until like he sees him yeah. in yeah. you and it's like man but yeah. the fire is there it hurts yeah. and, it, and it's a process so yeah. It's so it's you know, what's really funny about what you were sharing about the reflection of Jesus in the refinement. Um, a good friend of mine, I was on the phone with him actually today and he was like, bro, have you ever rewatched Lion King? And I'm like, <laughs> oh, bro. I'm like, what do you mean? I'm you like, I mean, me? yeah, I love that movie. And then he's like, no, but bro, like it's biblical. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. I was Straight like, up. I was like, what do you mean, man? What, what scene are you talking about? And he's just like. You know that scene where Rafiki goes up to Simba and he's like, hey, um, oh, I, I know you or I know you. But he goes, I don't know who I am. Mm. And it's about his identity. Come on. And, right. <laughs> and, then, right. and then in that scene, um, it he looks at his reflection and he sees Mufasa, his mm. father. Bro. He just gave me some chills Come right on, now. Man. And Come he on. starts to see who yeah. he is. Come on. And his identity is because you have forgotten who you are. Come on, dude. Because mm. you Come on. are my son. Where's the, where's the offering plate, yeah. man? Come on. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> That is word. a sermon, it bro. Is a word. You're preaching. I, I thought it, I was like, this is, bro, I haven't even wow. thought of Lion King yeah. like this. And I was yeah. like, dang, because he's in him, bro. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's where the identity yeah. is because. We walk around with the helper. Yeah. Holy yeah. Spirit is it, with bro. us. Yeah. No, I think, you know, Ooh. it's, and to do that empowers you to be able to lean into those right. difficult spaces where Ooh. you have to lead, right? I think about, yeah. like, again, like, if we think about, like, what does ultimate leadership look like? Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. When Jesus had to go to the cross, mm. it was difficult. He was like, man, like, mm. if possible, let this cut right. pass. Yeah. But mm. he, for the joy set before him. So in that moment, he had to think about the joy. All right, what is the end game right now mm -hmm. in order to endure this difficulty? But even the endurance of that, I'm thinking about just what you shared, Ben, there's a vulnerability that had to be experienced. Vulnerability is a key ingredient to that reconciliation, yeah, to that restoration, right? right? Mm -hmm. If Jesus was not willing to make himself vulnerable as a leader, Mm. I think the opportunity to be reconciled with us, it, we, I don't know what that would have looked like. That's he right. had to, he had to die, you know, That's he had right. to yeah. first of all, yeah. become a man and then as a man live a sinless life and then die for us yeah. in yeah. order to reconcile us. So as right. you step into the spaces where you have to lead the ultimate peacemaker, Jesus mm -hmm. had to embrace that vulnerability. Mm -hmm. yeah. And part of that vulnerability also includes confrontation. You know, I heard the, the great, mm -hmm. Uh, theologian Kevin Burgess, KB, say <laughs> there is no reconciliation without confrontation, right? Mm -hmm. We had to be confronted with our sin, right. with our brokenness, mm -hmm. who yeah. we are. And so as you move in, as I move into spaces where we, the Lord is calling us to lead, um, there will be times where we have to confront people. We got to do it in love. Yeah. Yeah. But like when you're confronting family or if I'm confronting my family or if I'm yeah. confronting, you know, congregants or mm -hmm. guys that I work with, you know, that, 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 
you know, unless there's a reality of what the situation is, this goes back to the sobriety, right? Let's, we got to call yeah. it for what it is. Yeah, yeah, That's right. yeah. That's that right. is the first step to if we if we just try to go straight to reconciliation without the actual conf- confrontation or mm-hmm. acknowledgement, we're gonna miss. Yeah. I don't even think it's possible to get there. And yeah. so, yeah. so just want to so encourage good. you to be like, hey, like Ooh. you know, as you're being called into that space that feels uncomfortable, um, look to that reflection. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then embrace the vulnerability. Yeah, but v- yeah, vulnerility yeah, yeah. can only be embraced if we know whose we are. Yeah, you know. Right. Otherwise, we're gonna go. That's, we're gonna pre- so we're gonna self protect, right? Yeah, we're gonna yeah. be like I gotta I gotta protect myself rather than like trusting mm-hmm. who God says I am and who He says He is. Yeah, you know. That's so good. Yeah, I mean, dude, you got me on this Lion King Come kick on, right man. now because like <laughs> I'm thinking about I'm thinking about how like like first of all is Rafiki the Holy Spirit, <laughs> but like but um mm-hmm. you know a- after he like starts to be like oh shoot he sees the reflection of his father yeah encounters his father in the clouds right. which was like That's and literally right. he was like you know you've forgotten who you are and mm. he's like, you're my son you're the you're the rightful yeah. king basically yeah. go back and take your kingdom it wasn't like he went back and the kingdom was handed to him mm, he had right. to he had to take down scar mm-hmm. and his whole yeah. his whole army so he had to toil and 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 kind of go through mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. and like you know when i think about Man, because you said not even who you are, it's whose you are. Mm-hmm. Like you are our father. We are our fathers. Mm-hmm. Like right. our mm-hmm. father, Jesus, God, he, we are his. And, you know, he's the one who protects. He says vengeance is mine. Like, you know, he is that's a right. protective father. And, you know, that's like such a concept that like is so hard to actually grasp yeah. of like, yeah. you know, we in our pride, in our self-preservation instincts, we think that we need to do the things to take care of ourselves. That's why we, we hoard, we like go and work so hard. And like, it's like, if I, no one's going to do bring it. Up, I got to bring up a conversation. I was actually having with Gene the other day where um, I basically said, cause we're talking about that where like, Hey man, we got to lean on God's strength. But then I was like, you know, the world gets it twisted where we think God will align with our skill to do the things that we need to do. <laughs> right. That's, that's where I yeah, think it yeah, is. Yeah. Meaning like if yeah. I'm a good, let's say I'm a really strong man. So I'm like, Oh God will probably use my muscles mm-hmm. to get something done. Yeah, but yeah. how many times in the Bible does he choose the weakest man to that's do the right. strongest yeah, thing? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And that is so upside down yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. that I'm like, Ooh, yeah. Oh man. God looking to get that glory. Right. Cause if there's, <laughs> you know, like if if I'm used because I'm strong, I could very easily make it about myself. Mm-hmm. That's right. it's the gospel of Alex because I'm you know I'm strong. Mm-hmm. And of That's course, right. God would pick me yep. to do this. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, rather than finding, you know, God finding opportunities for Him to really get that unadulterated mm-hmm. glory. That's right. right. Mm-hmm. And that's why Ben, man, when you said, "Hey, man, I'm like the worst person." To mediate this conversation, I was like, <laughs> I have a feeling that's why you're doing it. Oh my bro. gosh. Yeah. Lord Jesus, help me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. Was like, yeah. That second part of the question that you asked, can you repeat it one yeah, more time? Yeah. So, like, what does it look like for you to be a leader right now? Yeah. You, you hit some of that as you were talking mm-hmm. in sobriety. So, I mean, I, I definitely want to lean on that because I think it's really good to continue to strive, not just for saying things, but actually leading it by life. Yeah. Th- and that's hard and it's not easy. I could say that all day, but to wake up every day, sit, pray, connect with God, walk through the day, look at my family and just, just really lead them, but mm-hmm. leading them in humility yep. and leaving them as a servant, leading them, leaning on God's strength and not my own. I think those are things that are definitely one of the hardest things to do, especially with my family. Because there's always this weird thing. As you were sharing your family, so I'm like, dude, I feel you so much. Because with family, there's this weird part of my body or my mind, or it's like a whole thing where I'm like, oh, I deserve something from them just because mm-hmm. like they're my family, so it yeah. should be easier for me. Sure. Like, why do I have to toil? Right. Like, like, come on. Like, where's my whatever snippet of this relationship? Like, it's so weird that like my brain's doing this positioning thing Mm. like as if I deserve something right off the bat. Mm. And I think it's been just a, such a slow burn learning Mm. process of humility Mm -hmm. to Mm. sometimes just sit knowing that this person could even be a hundred percent wrong, but to still love them as if Jesus would love me. Mm. And it's just, 
<sighs> Dude, I just feel you, dog. Like when you would say, I was like, oh, mm, yeah, <laughs> like, I don't yeah, want to yeah. do that either. Yeah. Does that play out more as like <laughs> father, husband, brother? Like, where do you feel that? I think the hardest, besides my son, my sons are young. They're like five and eight years old. They're both boys. I don't have that that fiery conversation with them yet. I know it's going to come as they develop more and become their own men as mm. they get into their teenage years. So I'm not there yet. Thank the Lord. But <laughs> once it gets there, I'm sure we'll have different conversations on the pod, but definitely with my wife, I think the toughest thing with me and my wife is that there, there will be moments where um, she's completely right. I'm completely, it doesn't matter. The right part mm-hmm. does not matter. Mm-hmm. But what's crazy is how immediately, for some reason, you just throw the love out the window. And once love's out the window, once God's not a part of this conversation, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's just war. Yeah. I and it's you. like, and death Man. is the only outcome. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah. You know, isn't that crazy? Like, death is the only outcome. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm trying to, this woman that I love, that I married, mm-hmm. like, honestly, if you get to the root of the nastiness in your mind, mm-hmm. bro, you're trying to kill this woman in that mm-hmm. moment mm-hmm. out of the hate. Out of that yeah. wretched thing inside of you. Yeah. And yeah. what does that have to do with anything? Being right has no grounds in that. Yeah. Yeah. I mm. think, and I, you know, it's so funny. I was driving up here thinking about that. Just it, this, again, Holy Spirit, because mm. the fact that you mentioned that, I love listening to, I love watching shows like First Take mm. or like, you know, even the, we're going into election season, like mm. the debates. We are in a culture of debate. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and yeah, we're yeah. in a culture of arguing, right? And it's not even about relationships. It's about being right, Mm -hmm. you know. (laughs) And then what happens is I I think even baked into that is we don't even see people as people. We see people as ideas we disagree with. Right. right. (laughs) And so I'm guilty of that. Like when I'm getting into back and forth with my wife, I forget that she's my wife. She Mm -hmm. now represents this value that I disagree with Mm -hmm. about this Mm, decision or how we're going to spend our money. (sighs) And it's like, man, like I have to fight to like to like this is a person not a not an idea that i'm and again i think it's me trying to be righteous trying to be on the right side because i'm fighting for my own you know Mm -hmm. significance or validation Mm -hmm. at the expense of this relationship and that flies in the face of the commandments that the lord gave us (laughs) it's like love god love people and even go like i love what paul says it's like paul's like love does not insist on its own way you know, love believes the best. So even even in the, even when we're having the back and forth, mm. it's like, man, I'm I'm assuming the worst. I'm assuming yeah. I'm, you're gonna be you're gonna misunderstand me. Yeah. We're, we're a cynical culture, and I think that bleeds into the home sometimes. We have to be so aware of our cynicism. Cynicism, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. What's up, stewards? Thank you guys so much for supporting Good Service. If you guys love what we do, then become a Patreon subscriber. As a Patreon subscriber, you get exclusive content every single week. From Q&As to solo reflection rounds, extended episodes, spicy takes, vlogs, and so much more, you're going to find all of that exclusively on our Patreon. Log on to patreon.com slash goodservice. Thank you guys so much for your support. Back to the episode. Yeah, you know, like when I think about this like um, conflict and specifically with the ones that are closest to us. Um, yeah, it's weird. I never thought so deeply about like, when it comes to my family, I, I, there's like another person mm-hmm. of me. Like mm-hmm. there's like Ben the family version. <laughs> <laughs> and I really like, and yeah, it, it's, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a lot of it's entitlement. It, a lot of it is um, like, like it, I'll be honest, like avoidance. Like I don't, want to talk about that mm, that's yep. just not yeah. in my yep. preference of what i want to talk about yep. i would talk i want to talk about this instead mm-hmm. you know like mm-hmm. again that's that's it's rooted in pride and like entitlement and like you know also like deflecting like i don't want to deal with that like you do that like mm-hmm. why do i have to do that mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. it's like well what are you doing to help me with that like mm-hmm. it, and it, it's still rooted in selfish preservation like yeah. if i have to do it that means I'm going to be uncomfortable. Mm. Um, it's going to inconvenience me. I don't think it's fair for me. <laughs> mm. It's like all me, me, me. Yeah. And like, you know, if yeah. Jesus were, to, and then, you know, there's, there's also like, we don't want to go to the extreme of like, like don't ever do anything for yourself. Don't ever like do anything to protect or create boundaries. I'm not, mm. I'm not saying that. Mm-hmm. Cause I think it is also 
healthy and wise to know how to set boundaries Amen. with family. Yeah, yeah, you know, like you, you can't let just people trample all yeah, over you and yeah, then you're true, just true. just dead. No you know good for anybody else. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah, like yeah. I think there's a line of uh, and, and that's where like, you know, we got to pray like, Lord, give me the wisdom to create healthy boundaries while still um, laying myself down for the, the, the good of my family, mm-hmm. whether, you know, mm-hmm. whether it's your wives or your, you know, whatever, but, you know, for me, I'm not married, but like yeah. for my, you know, my mom, my brother, my sister. Yeah. And, and then like also knowing that it's not all on me. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Yeah. um, like the Lord is like, you know, he is my shepherd, you yeah. know, he's the one that yeah. will, guide me and then you know there's you know in the scriptures he will lay you down mm-hmm. in green past- pastures not like yeah. it's like he's like it's almost like no you need to chill mm-hmm. in this green pasture mm-hmm. right now mm-hmm. because you know mm-hmm. we're just sheep we don't know what, what's good for us so the yeah. shepherd knows like no it's yeah. time for you to lay down in these green pastures yeah. and he's that good to know how to take care of us and then there's this like relationship where it's like Yes, we need our shepherd. If we don't have our shepherd, we'll go astray. We're just like dumb sheep who don't know how to take care of ourselves, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, But yeah, like it's so weird, man. Like the closest ones to you can be the one where you, that, yeah, you just feel like you become a different person to them. Like my mom literally was like, why do you talk to me like that? Yeah. And I thought yeah. about that. I'm like, that's an interesting question. I don't talk to anyone else in my life like how I just talk to you. Mm. You know, and like it's my mom. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And you know, that's not to say that she doesn't, you know, there isn't things that she sure. has that kind of brings that out of me. Mm. There's a well, there's sure. complicated relationships, but you know, yeah. that really made me think. And like, you know, I shared this on like the last episode where like I was able to finally like in this moment like look at my mom and I've been praying for it. Like it's literally an answer prayer. Where I was like, Lord, give me the ability to see her the way that you see her. Yeah. Like give me your eyes to see her. Yeah. And then in this moment where I could have been like, really just like, you know, my normal mm-hmm. self, I was like, wow, she is like a, a girl in need of a father. Mm, She's right. just a little girl who doesn't have a father either. Mm, yeah. mm-hmm. And so like you, you can be a father to her, which sounds weird, right? It's like, you know, I'm her son, but I'm supposed to, I'm called to be a father to her. And so that itself is also a challenge, you know? And um, I think that's also a part of becoming a leader is is, um, being able to step outside of yourself and like, like how how should I be looking at this person? Not how am I, but how should I be? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then and then relying on the Lord, it's like Lord, I don't have the uh, natural ability to just start seeing somebody differently. Yeah. Yeah. It's a supernatural thing. Yeah, you know, and that's and, a, that's a, that seems so unique. Like being a leader for a parent, like that's mm-hmm. so nuanced. Yeah, and I'm like, what does that even look like, yeah. right? Because you think about you spend. 15, 20, 30 years in submission to this person. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And as you grow in maturity in Christ, now you see, oh, there's opportunities for me to lead this person who baked into my mind, I'm supposed to be following. So what are some ways that you have like found that ground of like, how do I lead my mom, even though she's still my mom? You know, it. you said it, man, it is a very complex um idea of like how do you lead this person who you've looked to your whole life as like you have been you've been my leader how, mm-hmm. and then when did we have a conversation ever that we were going to switch roles now <laughs> you know yeah. what i'm saying it's yeah. not like okay mm-hmm. now i'll be the kid you be the parent it, like yeah. it's never a yeah. it's not a uh, this like event that like we've now decided this is what it is mm-hmm. and um and it never will be. It's not like I will have a conversation with my mom. Like, okay, mom, I'm your leader now. Mm. She, she, she'll be like, what are you tripping? Like, how dare you talk to me that way? You know, she's, she's a Korean mom. She's like, the, the, the culture, the pride is so baked into her. Mm-hmm. So it, it's like, it's, it, and it's not this sort of like, let me sort of like, you know, in some slick way, just try to like maneuver my way. It's like, no, God, I don't know how to do it. But mm-hmm. I think it's, what I feel like it is, it's take each moment for what it is, moment by moment, and it's not going to be linear. There's going to be times where you're going to be in your flesh and you're going to 
still respond in the way that you wish you hadn't, mm -hmm. but then ceasing that and be like, okay, yeah. that was a moment that slipped away from me. Mm -hmm. And then like, I think that's what it means when scripture says like to hold every thought captive, yeah. like don't let any, any thought just be fleeting. Mm -hmm. That's right. And like, even your, 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 the L's that you take, it's like, all right, Lord, that I didn't, I didn't do that one well. Mm -hmm. And then he's like, hold that thought captive, take that to the Lord and then be like, yeah, we're called to repent. And it's like, Lord, teach me to repent. Teach me yeah. the next time yeah. to be a little bit faster to like recognize, like, here's another opportunity for you to not talk that way and for you to talk this way because talking this way is actually going to help the situation. Yeah. And to help is to lead, right? Like, yeah. so, yeah. and I've had the, these, these conversational moments, you know, in the last few months that I'm like, I never used to do that. And that's not me. <laughs> that, that was the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so I think, yeah, just it's, um, yeah, I guess just the word grace, right? Like have, have grace for yourself yeah. because not just because you should, cause it makes you feel better. Like, do you not think that the Lord has so much grace for you yeah. that when we yeah. trip up in those moments where we like, man, you should have not said that you should have mm -hmm. changed your tone. You should have yeah. just listened. And mm -hmm. yeah, like, yeah. do, do we not think that the Lord is not gracious to us in those yeah. moments. Yeah. So if he's gracious to us, then we need to be gracious to ourselves. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, man, but it's so, it's good. weird, bro. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I think even that humility in the leadership, regardless of like the age discrepancy, I think cuts through. Mm -hmm. Like when you're willing to say, I'm sorry, I was wrong. Like we, we live in a culture where people don't yeah. Do that. Yeah. So yeah. when you do do it, it's, it stands out loud. Right. But we can do it because we're operating from a place of victory, not trying to get to a place of victory. Right. right. So we recognize right. like God's already done it. He's forgiven me. Let me operate from that. And Alex, be how, old are, how old are your kids? Ooh. So how I just I have one daughter. She's one daughter. 11 months old. So, so I'm new in the game. <laughs> I'm, I'm the game. super excited for you as a new parent because right what you just shared, I wanted to speak into that and give you some encouragement and some excitement for what's coming. <laughs> because bring it on, bring it on. <laughs> when you're, as your daughter gets to a certain age of more cognizance and she just starts becoming your friend at the age of like three or four, mm -hmm. and she gets older, and there's gonna be these moments where there's a point of discipline, and then there's also a point of uh, boundaries, and there's a point of just when they just act just like fools right and then you're gonna come in you're gonna be a dad and you're gonna do your thing and go nope this is not for you don't do this they're gonna cry they're gonna do all this whole thing but there will also be moments where it's been done a hundred times now mm. and instead of just discipline it's also emotion mm. where it's like i just snap mm. where it's like not only i'm like did not did I not tell you mm. to touch that? Mm -hmm. So now there's emotion, mm. there's expectation, all that got just thrown in that all of that junk into the moment of discipline. Mm. When that happens, something new for me that I never experienced because I don't come from that generation where my parents were very different. My mom was very different. Mm -hmm. um, it was a different time back in the mm -hmm. 90s, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, hey, no fault to anyone. It is what it is. But... Um, Thank God for <laughs> lifting generational curses and yeah. thank God for just really um, the generational curse started or started to break the moment my mom discovered Jesus and started praying for me mm. when she was a young woman and prayed for our family and brought that whole, she just broke it for all of us and mm. she didn't even know that yet. And I haven't mm. even thanked her for that yet, mm. but I'm telling you, my opportunity today is I'll lash out how dare you, blah, blah, blah. Moment happens. He's disciplined, crying in his room and whatnot. And without a second's hesitation, I go, what did I just do? Mm. Not because he, he did wrong or right. Doesn't even matter. It was a moment of discipline. He needs to know it's wrong. But what did I just do? Mm. I immediately go in his room. I get right to his eye level, whether I have to sit down or lay down or whatever I got to do. Eye to eye, I go, hey, I need you to look at me. He looks at me. Immediate instinct is, of course, fear, because he just got in trouble. He looks at me with fear, looks right in my eyes. My first thing I have to say is, I'm sorry. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Because I tell him, son, no matter what happens, mm -hmm. I love you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I need him to know that the love is always first. And then I explain, this is what happened. Yeah. 
I'm sorry that I yelled mm. the way I did. Mm. Yeah. But I need you to know that I absolutely love you. It doesn't change any of the love. Mm. But I but this was wrong. Yeah. But we'll talk about it yeah. again. And I've been doing this like I learned very early that as a parent, you can't stop these moments mm. from happening. It's just yeah. gonna keep happening. Yeah. Like yeah. This is a constant ebb and flow. Yeah. Mm. Like I thought, okay, I'm never going to do it again. Yeah, right. You're mm. going to do it every single day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. But mm. as you do it, these little small steps of just slowing it down, yeah. not letting the despair take over and ego and pride, but just go right into it and yeah. go, you know what? No, I love you, son. Yeah. And that relationship now with my sons, both of them, it, it's something that I never experienced growing up, mm. so I am, so I'm really excited because they're just so different than I am. Yeah, yeah. They walk around yeah. with the kind of love that I never even experienced. Wow. Yeah. So, <sighs> you well, know, pra yeah. praise God for this, we talk about sobriety. The sobriety to be able to do that mm. is something to really give thanks to the Lord for. Right. And man, just as much as generational curses can be passed down, generational blessings That's can be passed right. down. Right. And so I'm mm. I'm hearing and yeah. seeing generational blessings take root in your yeah, family yeah. that are going to play out in your life and your kid's life. Yeah. And that's something yeah. to, to, you know, as much as we know, like we, we can see what's going wrong. We got to yeah. give thanks for what's going right. Uh, Amen. So that's, yeah. I appreciate you sharing that. That's good, man. You know, and uh, as you know, when I think about that kind of leadership that you're teaching your sons, mm. you're teaching your sons leadership through how you discipline and then also can admit your own fault mm. in the way that you discipline. Mm. And like, bro, I'm just like you. My parents were great at the disciplining part. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> they did yeah, not yeah, spare yeah. the rod, yeah, not yeah, one yeah, time. Um, not even once. But, <laughs> not even yeah. once. but like, and then yeah, 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 never yeah. was there an apology. Yeah. Never was there an, yeah. a recognition of yes. the yelling, the, the excessive discipline. Mm. And it was just then like, then I always just lived in fear. And yeah. then when yeah. you live in fear without any like hope of like um, love or what, or, you know, you, you think like, well, they provide food for me. They put a roof over my head. That's how they show love. So then you start thinking, well, I guess that's what love is then. Mm. And then like, and then, you know, because I we're 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 kids, bro, and we're also these sinful kids. We're gonna keep doing stupid things. So then, what that what's that gonna do? I'm gonna hide it now because I don't want that rod. I'm gonna start hiding my start stuff. Getting real good at hiding, right? Yeah, right. I got very good at hiding. That's you know, right. that's right. And that's like, right. so what you're teaching your kids is like, ah, uh, yeah. It's okay to be, um, and that, it's not like you're giving them permission. Like, oh, it's okay to sin, but it's like it's okay to be human and 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 error mm -hmm. but like there is restoration that should happen yeah. immediately yeah. you know what i mean yeah. and like yeah, yeah i didn't yeah. i never guess so yeah like literally when i shared this last time when my mom apologized to me last week i'm like that's the second time in my whole life you've <laughs> ever <laughs> said sorry <laughs> and i'm keeping count because yeah, i'm like yeah, yeah. there's not much to count there's, there's two <laughs> like and i'm like yeah man that's yeah. done a lot of damage to me though well, you know, I, yeah so i want to ask you like how has that, and you both can share, I'm, I'm curious, yeah, yeah. how has that affected the way that you view God the Father? Ooh. Dude, that's a So you think about like your question. your experience with your earthly parents yep. and how that shit, because it's a first, I think about this with my daughter, her first encounter with authority, justice, faithfulness, mm. discipline, mm. it's going to be through me. Yep. Yeah. And it's going to shape how she views Absolutely. Yeah. Heavenly Father. I'm yeah. curious how you guys yeah. had to like wrestle with that. You know, I have something for both of us. I have a feeling that's why and I'm, I've said this on camera so many times. That's why I think today, as we are so close to the Lord today, as we're walking in their daily walk with God, me and Ben cry like probably once a week. <laughs> <laughs> he spit out Bring all the tears, bro. <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah. We, we are a mess yeah. once a week because mm. because of we have some similar and different upbringings. But one thing for sure is this relationship with our father is yeah. definitely tarnished. And yeah. because of that, the overwhelming love of the father, the unconditional yeah. over just so much. I find myself anytime, even in the smallest ways where I just sitting with God, 
I'm just wrecked, bro. Mm. I'm crying because I'm. It's so abrasively new still. Yeah. After all these years, it's still yeah. new for me yeah. to be that loved. And th- you know, that's a great question because that's probably why I cry every week. Yeah. Like I'm, yeah. and I'm not even like crying like a little. I'm like crying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I'm just not used to it. Yeah, yeah. 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 It, it feels. It's because that feels very foreign. You know, like yeah. an unconditional, unconditional love. Unconditional. What? Yeah, yeah. What is that? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I've is, never experienced that. Everything has been conditional, yeah, yeah, and it's yeah, based yeah, on yeah. my obedience. Yeah. You know, like you love me when I do what you say, Works-based, and then yeah. I get, I get, I get punished, and and no, no restoration. Mm. It's just, Ooh. it's mm. like you're punished, yeah. and then it's like, come and eat. Mm. Don't yeah. e- we don't even talk about what would just happen. Yeah. It's That's like right. come eat your food. That's right. Yeah. And, and then I like fearfully go and eat my food all quietly, and mm. I'm just afraid. Yeah. That's and right. then it's like, and then we forget about it, and we don't talk about it, and it gets mm. swept under the rug. So like, so yeah, I think my view of God growing up was he, I must obey him, otherwise he'll punish me. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, mm. that's literally yeah. that's literally my relationship with God. You yeah. have to obey him or he's going to punish yep. you. Literally. My, yeah. I, I, I hear you, dog. Hey, I got to <laughs> like, Lord, I'm not trying to like, you know, dishonor my mom as if she's the worst. But she's she's a great mom. Um, flawed. Yes. You know, um, and, and she's just like me. Sinner, you know, without Jesus, sinner in need of a savior, just like me without Jesus. But, you know, my mom <laughs> would weaponize scripture she says, if you don't honor me and do what I say, God's going to punish you. Mm. And she's like, what does the Bible say? Honor your mother and father. Mm. So I'm just like, frick, man. Yeah. That means I got to obey every single stupid thing that they say, even though I know some of their stuff Wrong. that they yeah. say is dumb. Yeah, yeah. But I'm, I got to honor that. Yeah. And so it also made this, like, created this, like, resentment slash, like, bitterness and mm. anger, you know? And, like, and it's just like, man, I don't want to, I don't want to be in a relationship like that, you know? So then, like, yeah, it, it became this, like, yeah, kind of what you're saying, works-based. Mm-hmm. You know, I got to do what he says so that he doesn't punish me, and that's it. And, yeah. then, and then now, like, as, you're, as Kevin was saying, you know, this understanding of a, a father who loves me unconditionally, I'm like, I don't even know what that means. I mean, mm-hmm. I do now, like, mm-hmm. in Jesus' name, I do mm-hmm. now, but mm-hmm. it, it, that's, that is why there's such this emotional, like, expression of like i don't know how to like receive that because my whole life i haven't experienced that yeah. yeah and i think like god is teaching me now in my like you know later years like it's okay that you haven't experienced it but you're going to experience it now yeah you know and, what I mean? and it's about how relentless the lord is to pursue you that's right yeah. Yeah. despite your earthly experiences it's like i want to give that's you right. a true understanding of what this right. relationship looks like that is something against the backdrop of our yeah. experiences with our parents who yeah. are sinful fallen broken creatures yeah. they tried mm-hmm. you know but they're still brokenness for god yeah. to still break through all of that mm-hmm. and for us to be able to experience them that's like so much glory deserved yeah. Yeah. um Amen. for me it was like i you know me and my dad could talk about sports till we're blue in the face <laughs> like but but you know but we never really learned to talk about the vulnerable things wow. and that's yeah, something yeah, that yeah. i i didn't realize was a chink in the armor until I got older and mm. especially being married and moving into leadership, like going back to the vulnerability, like I never cultivated that. Mm. We didn't talk about relationships or, mm-hmm. or even just like money, like most things that are like very personal and vulnerable. Mm-hmm. We could talk about very surface things, sports. And yeah. so I, I didn't realize like, man, this, my prayer life was hindered by that because mm. I didn't feel comfortable or even know how to have vulnerable prayers yeah. with the Lord. And so it's yeah. very surfacey, very like, kind of like, Hey, like, you know, you know, this and that thing, but, but to name things that I'm struggling with or things that I'm afraid with. Yeah. Cause I didn't cultivate that kind of communication rhythm when I was younger mm-hmm. with my dad and I didn't, you know, and I, and I connected the dots like, man, I don't even know how to do this. Mm-hmm. Right. And so I think about just going back to our conversation about leadership is like, man, we are shaping whether it's through our kids yeah. or through people that yeah. we are doing life with community with, yeah. Uh, we're shaping how people experience World the changes, Lord, right? right? Follow yeah. me as I follow Christ. And so, mm-hmm. man, what a yeah. what a tremendous call. It's it's a yeah. it's a scary call. It's yeah. a big call, but it's yeah. also, man, it, it is a eternally reverberating call. Like yeah. this thing is gonna echo throughout generations. Yeah. Like whether yeah. it's through your kids' kids mm-hmm. or whether it's mm-hmm. through our friends' kids, you know, yeah, or through right. our, yeah. you know, cousins or whoever it may be, like how they experience the Lord through us, through our leadership, mm-hmm. is gonna go outwards to their mm-hmm. spaces that they work in spaces that you do life in and so um so yes yeah, so for leadership man that is a 
It's a it's a big responsibility, man. Yeah. Speaking of responsibility, I had a question this whole time. I had a burning question in my mind because you've done all these different things with music, mm-hmm. your career, and you've been so involved just, you know, walking with God and all these different things. Where was, the, like, why the pastor part? Like, only because, man, being a pastor, extremely difficult, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Now you're living in a glass box. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And then your, it, the boundaries are going to be just a lot of learning and boundaries that's mm-hmm. coming up for you now. Mm-hmm. Because, I'm experiencing that right now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> because you're talking relationship boundaries. Yeah. You're talking about time boundaries. You're talking about family boundaries. You're talking about work boundaries. Mm. And I don't even know if you stopped doing the music thing. So I don't even know if that's being juggled into all yeah. this either. Yeah. So to do all of this and then to suddenly go, I'm going to add this on top mm. and decide to live a much more difficult <laughs> life because uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. everyone that's glorifying pastors out there is not easy. No, no. Oh, uh, you're like inviting the scrutiny. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I got to ask, man, like what it, I mean, obviously the easy answer is probably Jesus, but what, what happened? Like what happened? Yeah. Well, it's funny. I did. I, I always say I didn't add this. The Lord added it. Cause like, I didn't like, it was not something growing up. Mm-hmm. I, even when I moved to LA, when I joined reality, it was never even on the radar. Mm-hmm. Um, I was identified and affirmed by leadership and say, Hey, we see these gifts in you mm-hmm. pray about it. And I was diligent to pray about it. Um, I still do the music, so I'm a lay elder. So I'm not on staff. I'm not a staff elder. So I still have my job, still pushing buttons for a living, making sounds. Okay. Um, and I, you know, it's funny as I prayed about it, I was like, man, the Lord is has been using me in a shepherding role for years through what I do creatively, right? right? Mm, yeah. So as a producer, mainly producer, composer, I have a studio. People will come into my studio. They'll sit on the couch. Yeah. And before we even push a key or a button or anything or mm-hmm plug in the microphone we just talk about life Mm. we just sit there and talk about relationships Mm. talk about breakups and you know ambitions and all these things and Mm. and i'm able to share my experience Mm -hmm. you know the way the lord has reframed the way i look at you know i talked about permanence like how people write songs love me forever like yeah Yeah, that's a that's a good we want to be loved let me explain why this and so we go like down this rabbit hole of like really personal vulnerable things which then creates cool records right Mm -hmm. because then you're able to write from that that's right. Soften the place of vulnerability yeah. where you're able to articulate. And I would I always say like the best songs are written when people are just like very comfortable in a room. Mm-hmm. You know, um, a lot of times in the music industry, you know, especially if you have publishing deals, the publisher will say, hey, you're going to go write this producer over here at this studio. And you've never met the producer. You go in there and it's like a blind date. Yeah, yeah. And it's really it's really hard to write good records there because you can't it's hard to manufacture that vulnerability. Oh. For me, the best songs that I've written have been with people that I'm friends with, that I have been in rooms with for years because we just know how to go there. Yeah, you guys built it. Um, yeah. And yeah. so so I thought about like, man, I've been doing this like I, I enjoy that. I enjoy talking about life and looking at life in layers and and just seeing the way that scripture intersects with our ambitions and our fears and all these things. And so being in L.A., so many I mean, you guys go in reality, there's so many creatives there. Like our church, at least 50% hey, people yeah, work yeah. in some creative capacity. Mm. So I'm like, man, I think the Lord is inviting me into an opportunity to partner with him in shepherding creatives. Mm. Um, you know, people that are trying to make sense of their faith mm. and their jobs living in LA, which is super hard. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, it's, uh, it's been a, a sweet transition into it. I think it's been interesting seeing the parallels of people who knew me before I was an elder and then people who meet me as an elder, like, you know, mm-hmm. um, so even just being mindful of like <laughs> the conversation, oh, wow. it's like, hey, what's up, yeah, exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Oh, wow. Yeah, no, I know. No, I get it. I get it. Yeah, yeah. I know. Well, it's just funny. I tell Jeremy, you know, it's like some people are afraid to go up and talk to Jeremy. Yeah, they're yeah. like, it's Pastor Jeremy. Yeah, can yeah, you yeah, ask yeah. him if he can marry me? I'm like, just go up and ask him. <laughs> yeah. But I get it. You know, it's the, I think there's there's a reverence, but it can't be like he's not a deity. You know, what sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, um, yes. But yeah, I, you know, I, again, I just try to disarm that and just be like, hey, let's, let's yeah. let me share about myself and what I, where I've come and where I'm yeah, going yeah, and. Yeah. Again, just create that safe space. That's cool. um, and so, yeah, it's, it's been sweet. You know, I, I, my whole L.A. life, I've been at this job. I've been in L.A. for about be nine years in January. I've been in reality since the first week I came out here. Mm, been in community groups. 
Uh, shout out to NoHo Arts Group. Let's go. Um, and yeah, just seeing just the the journey that it is to exist and be in LA, and really even seeing pre pandemic, post pandemic, man, there's such a need for just people for care. That's you know, right. and so if I Poor if I can care. care to then disciple people to then That's care, right. now we're creating this web yes. of care. Yes. And yes. I want people to be able to experience care in our groups and then go out to their jobs, right? Yeah. So if you're on set, uh, you're in a studio, you know, yeah. you're out in the field yeah. or wherever you're, yeah. you're, in, you're in the office, you're in the medical room, or whatever, being able to care for people yeah. because you've been discipled in just the ways of Jesus. Man, that, 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 that right there just needs to be a whole social movement in LA. That yeah. Yeah. right there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. You know that that really resonates with me. I was actually gonna ask him that question anyway, so that, that's also the Holy Spirit. I'm like, yo, you guys, you guys are just too busy. Right? Legit, legit. I'm like, yeah, man, yeah, I, you yeah. know, I've, you know, we we've gotten kind of closer in the last year. You know, we were in, in that reading group together, and, yeah. um, but you know, I've known of you for years. You know, people are like, yo, you, you, you know, Alex Hitchens. I'm like, I mean, yeah, I've, I've heard of him. Yeah, they, mm. yo, you guys should like hang out. Like, you mm. know, he works in like the music industry and da 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 da. And so, like, off top, I was already like, man, I, I'm sure there's a lot that I could relate to this guy on. Because, you know, for me, too, I'm just like, oh, yeah, I'm not I'm not looking to get into any for, form of, like, traditional ministry, you know? Like, um, like I'm just like, yeah, I, my, my career is in the entertainment space. It's in dance. And, you know, that's kind of, I think that's my lane. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, as of just the last, like, couple of years, you know, yeah, mainly, like, since, like, 2023, God's been showing me like, do you know what, what do you think ministry is? You know? And I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't know, Lord, <laughs> I feel like I might be in my ministry mm -hmm. right now. Um, but then like, doesn't mean that we stay here, you know? So, um, yeah, man, there's, there's, there's different, <laughs> I've had conversations with people that have like identified certain things in me and I'm like, no, 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 no. Don't call me that. Don't, you know, <laughs> like that's not the title that I, yeah. I, uh, you know, uh, you know, sort of like self-proclaimed. I don't, I don't say that about myself, mm. but like, you know, when you said like it was the Lord and I'm like, well, I can't deny what the Lord's going to do, yeah. you know? Yeah. So it, it's encouraging for me. And I, as I seen your journey too, and then like, as you got ordained, I'm like, oh shoot. Alex is a pastor now. <laughs> He's an elder. Like, yeah. all right. Like, I relate to this dude. Yeah. So I don't know. I just think that's really cool. And um, yeah, man, like I wanted to just, you know, like just, yeah, acknowledge even the way that you show up um, in our church community. And like, um, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I think that the way that Jesus would want us to show up in the world is show up as yourself you don't now that you yeah, are it. you know your title has this has been added to you now you got to act like this you got to you know talk like that mm -hmm. and it's no, no just you continue as you are and god uses you as you are that's right and so yeah that's just a real that's a big encouragement yeah i, I think you know again going back to leadership leadership plays out in different spaces in different ways you know i like to consider myself you know a leader in the studio you know, I can be a leader in my small group, yeah. leader in the church. Obviously, there's more formality in like sure. the office of elder. You know, you're dealing with more like things like at the end of the day, like what happens at our church, you know, the the, the buck stops in the elder's office. So mm. it may not be our fault, but it's our responsibility. Mm. Right. That's mm. fatherhood 101, being mm. married 101. Mm. It might not be my fault, but it can be my responsibility. Right. right. And so embracing yeah, yeah. that. Um, but also just recognizing like for me, music is not the end. You know, right. dance should not be the end. No. It's the means mm -hmm. to the end, yeah. which is mm -hmm. beautiful relationships yeah. with people. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, mm -hmm. You know, I always say, like, if I work with somebody on a record, I want to be able to work with them for the next 10 years. Hey, you know, let's so go. let's cultivate a really good relationship where yeah. we just become friends. That's right. You know, and then right. from there, the really the music happens. That's the good right. music happens. But it's right. really about the relationships, mm -hmm. you know, because that's I mean, that's what we I mean, especially in L.A. We're so transient. You know, you'd be with somebody for a year or two on a, on a project and then you may never see them again. Right. Yeah. Right. Very um, yeah. So it's like, man, what does it look like to build sustainable relationships with yeah, people? That's right. um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think workplace is a prime place for a lot of that to happen. You know, yeah. obviously at our, ch at our church, you know, being rooted, we're big on that in reality. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but then we go out and we spend 40 hours, 50 hours, 60 yeah. hours a week that's right. in our respective fields. Mm -hmm. right. like that's where we're doing life. That's where we're doing yeah. ministry. That's where we yeah, should be loving and shepherding yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, whether it's a title or not, like you have opportunities to, to shepherd people where you're at. Yeah. And, um, I think it's a beautiful thing, man. Yeah, that's good, good. man. It's good. 
Well, Alex, so we uh, we call this show Good Service. We frequent these restaurants that provide good, nourishing meals, delicious meals, good experiences, and good service. That's why we go back to our favorite restaurants, uh, Faka Grill. Faka Grill. Shout out to Faka Grill mm -hmm. um, for this amazing meal. But um, so good service, um, good and service can mean different things to different people. So what does good service mean to you, Alex? It's a great question. Good service to me is to, I think, consistency. You know, think about food. Like, I'm looking for a restaurant that's consistent. That's right. Yeah. You know, I know yeah. what to expect. Yeah. They can deliver. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm experiencing just the the beauty of it, the 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 holistic experience, whether it's, you know, the, the ambience in the restaurant and yeah. all that. And so what does it look like to be of good service to people, right? And for them to experience consistency and faithfulness. Wow. In a very inc inconsistent world, you know, mm. I love LA. LA could be a little inconsistent, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I love it. I'm gonna lean into that inconsistency right. and, and and take it as an opportunity to be someone that is consistent. Wow. And so, um, so yeah, be of service. You know, consistent service. That's good, man. Yeah, good. yeah. I get this this image of like, you know, yeah, being like. LA is consistently inconsistent. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, well, you know, I, I always say it. So, like, people's like, yes is maybe, maybe's no. Yeah, no is yeah. like, don't lose my number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, but, but, like, that creates this, like, um, yeah, yeah, like, uh, you don't know what to rely on. Yeah. And, and then that creates, like, you know, kind of confusion and darkness. And then when you, when you show up consistent and it's like, man, this dude always shows up like this and you become that. That, I think that's what it looks like to be a light in a place of darkness. It's mm -hmm. like, man, everything else is just like this. It's just chaotic. And then like this person is like, man, like I just, I could just rely on this person, not just showing up even, but just being that person every time you show up. So, um, yeah, man, that's so good. And uh, I just want to just do acknowledge and, and affirm and thank you, bro. Like just for being who you are and like, you know, just being able to, you know, grow in our friendship and brotherhood in the last, you know, few, like, you know, half a year or plus. And, um, it's been really cool, man. And I just want to, uh, we just want to bless you, bro. And, 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 uh, be able to just, um, encourage you. And, um, if there was a way that, uh, we could serve you in this time with us here or our listening audience, what is a way that, um, that we can serve you, man, continue to pray for me as I continue to step into leadership, but you guys are doing it. Like, <laughs> As as someone who, who works in a field where I create things that impact people I'll never meet, you guys are doing that. You know, there are people listening to this. You may, you may meet, you may never meet, but you're shaping how people view mm -hmm. vulnerability, mm -hmm. transparency, courage, uh, wisdom. Um, you're doing the work, and I think that for me is mutually encouraging. Mm. Um, so I'm praying for you guys as you pray Thank for you, me. Bro. Thank, um, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank L.A. is better. You know our our. For podcast world is better for having you guys. Wow. So hey, yeah, wow, keep up the good work. Hey, keep up the good really work. Really encouraging, man. We we will receive that in yes, Jesus' name. Thank yes, you so much. Yes. But uh, yeah, Alex, thank you so much for spending some time with us, yes, man. Sir. Thank you guys, folks. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Good Service. We'll catch y'all in the next one. We out of here. Peace, peace. Thank you guys so much for listening to this episode. If you like what we're doing, make sure you like, follow, subscribe, and hit that five-star rating and make sure you write us a review. Follow us on all of our socials at Good Service Pod on Instagram and TikTok and make sure you follow us on YouTube and subscribe at Good Service Podcast. Thank you guys. Peace.